Hey, welcome to UK Wildcraft. Earlier this year, I hiked 700 miles of the Wales Coast Path. It was absolutely incredible, and I recommend it to anyone that's into hiking. And I've had quite a few people asking me in the comments of the videos what gear I took with me on this hike. So I thought I'd do a video explaining all of the gear that I took. I'll start off with the bigger items like uh, the bags and tent, but I'll work through every single item that I took with me. First of all, my hiking bag. I've had this for many, many years. I've got the Osprey Efa 70 litre. It's quite a big bag, so it might not be suitable for everyone, but Osprey do quite a few different size bags and anything by Osprey is going to be really well made. It's a bit more expensive than some bags. I got this one for 200 pound and that was on offer. Um, if that's a bit out of your price range, then I recommend any of the bags by Carrymore. They're also pretty good. I had one of those for quite a few years. But the good thing of Osprey is these are so well built, it should last you for life. If you're going to splash out on one bit of kit, then I recommend it being your hiking bag and getting the best quality you can afford. Because especially if you're doing long distance hiking, you want something that's comfortable and sturdy. The size of the bag you want really depends on the type of trip you're doing. If you're only going for a few days, then maybe a 40 litre or smaller will be fine. And the same thing if you're going to be staying in hostels or Airbnbs every night. You won't need to take as much kit with you. But for my trip, I was out in the wild a lot, so I was needing to carry more supplies. Sometimes I wouldn't get to a town or uh, somewhere I could resupply for up to a week, so I needed to carry a lot with me. I could keep my tent clipped on the front of the bag, which is quite handy. If you had to keep that in your bag, that would take up a good amount of the room. So I actually upgraded my tent just before this trip. I went for the Nemo Dagger Osmo two-person and uh, it's fairly expensive, it's £500, which I realise is going to be out of some people's price range. I upgraded a few bits of my kit before this trip, but I'm also going to talk about the kit that I used to use, which is a bit cheaper. I'd say this is the perfect backpacking tent. It's pretty light, it's less than two kilos and it's really easy to set up and I like the fact it's got plenty of room to move about in. And I really like the fact that you can take the rain fly off, so on a nice dry night, you can have an open canopy to watch the stars, but it also keeps the bugs out. In the lower section of the bag is where I keep all my sleeping stuff. On the outside, I just keep this really cheap roll mat which I've had for many years and you can pick these up for like five pound and I like to have one of these just to have underneath my actual air mat because if you're sleeping anywhere with thorns I've gone through quite a few air mats where they get punctured so this is just like for wear and tear I don't mind this getting quite tatty and also if I just want to stop and sit somewhere, like in the woods, and the ground's wet, I can just chuck this down and sit straight on this. And then in this lower section of the bag, I've got my air mat, I've got the Nemo uh, insulated extra wide mat. I like an extra wide mat because I, I like to spread out when I sleep. And this is really, really comfortable. Again, fairly expensive. I think this was £240. But for someone like me who uses it a lot, it's completely worth it. What I also did on this trip, I took a single fitted bed sheet and put it on this air mat, just so you get that bit of extra comfort. It's like sleeping in an actual bed then. And it comes with this bag for inflating the air mat. It's quite clever really. You just blow into this and then attach it to the valve and it probably takes four maybe five goes and then it's fully inflated one bit of kit that I have that I'm not going to recommend to you is my sleeping bag again this is something that I upgraded just before I went on my trip I bought the Rub Neutrino and it was about £400, 
So I was expecting a really good sleeping bag for that, but it's not that great. I mean, it's good enough, but if I would have tested it out before I went on this trip, I would have sent it back. So it's good, but not worth the money, in my opinion. When it comes to sleeping bag, the big choice really is whether to get down or synthetic. Uh, if you're going on a long distance hike, I recommend down because it packs up a lot smaller and they do keep you a bit warmer as well. Synthetic bags are usually really big and they're a struggle to get into your backpack. So luckily I also took this with me on my trip around Wales, the One Tigris down blanket. And this is an amazing piece of kit. So they, again, because it's down, it packs up really small, but this is quite a nice size blanket and this keeps you really nice and warm. And this was only about 70 pound. So this one's quite a bargain, really. The other thing that I really like about this down blanket is when you're sat around your camp in the evening and it's getting chilly, you can just wear it a bit like a cape and it's got buttons so you can button it up or you can even get several of the blankets and button them together so yeah that keeps you really warm because it's down it traps all the air in it that's what keeps you really warm and even if you're not camping this is a good thing to have at home if you're a person that gets cold really easily i'm not one of those people there <laughs> And finally, for my sleeping setup, I've just got a basic blow up travel pillow. This is one I got off Amazon for about £20. There are better ones on the market, but this one's fairly nice. It's got a quilted cover, so it's not like those normal air pillows where it feels like you're actually sleeping on a balloon. This one's fairly comfortable. So, this is my sleeping setup. I've got that cheaper roll mat underneath for protection. Then I've got my Nemo air mat. And as I said before, I'd normally have a bed sheet on this just for comfort. Then I've got my sleeping bag. And if it's extra cold, then I'll use my One Tigris down blanket as well. Or if I'm going in summer, I'll probably just take this One Tigris blanket and not a sleeping bag. And I've got my pillow there as well. So I like taking a bit of extra comfort when I'm going long distance hiking. For me, it's worth taking that little bit of extra weight, but getting a good night's sleep because you really need that recovery to be able to carry on hiking the next day. So for me, this is pretty much good as sleeping in a normal bed at home. Oh, and by the way, some of these products I have Amazon affiliate links for in the description of this video. So if you are thinking about getting some of these products for your next camping trip, then please consider getting them through my Amazon affiliate link. Thank you. Next up, let's take a look at clothing. So first of all, you wanna get yourself a dry bag. So you can make sure that your kit in the bag is staying dry. You always wanna have something dry to change into in the evening. So basically what I did is I had two sets of clothes, one set that I'd be wearing and one that I could wash or dry. So I'd have two t-shirts, two underwear, two pairs of socks. Uh, socks, I'd recommend getting merino wool, they're really good for hiking. They, uh, really, they're really comfortable and they seem to stop bacteria growing because you don't need to wash them quite as often. I also had a thin fleece. This is a Berghaus one, and this actually zips into my waterproof jacket. And I also had this for when it's really cold. And this is a down jacket. And I got this one from um, Decathlon. I think it's a four class is the brand. I think that's their home brand. So this is a really, really good jacket. And again, down, so traps the air in and keeps you really warm. Sometimes if it's like a really, really cold night below freezing, I'll wear this to bed as well. What I like about this jacket is on the left hand pocket, you can open it, just 
turn it inside out. Stuff it all in there. And it's basically like its own little pouch. And again, down so it crunches up really small and really light. I also took a bandana just to stop my head from getting burnt when it was sunny. This actually turned out being quite handy for moving around hot stuff when you're cooking. It's basically like a little kitchen cloth. And another good thing, once you've got this full of your clothes, you can then use that as an extra pillow if you like. I also took some thin waterproof trousers, which I didn't really end up using that much just because of these shorts. Are quite quick drying so so I ended up not really bothering. The one good thing about these though is if it's really really heavy rain then you can wear these and it kind of stops the rain going in your shoes and getting your socks wet. And then I've got my Berghaus rainproof jacket which is also quite windproof, quite handy on the Wales coast. For hiking shoes I used Keen which is a Dutch brand and they were really really good. I'm usually someone that suffers with blisters quite bad and I didn't get any serious blisters on that trip which is pretty impressive really. I've got rid of the shoes now because I've had them quite a long time and they got pretty battered. So now I've got some Carrymore ones. These were a bit cheaper. The Keen ones were about £120 and these Carrymore ones were £30 so a fair bit cheaper. And because when you get to camp all you want to do is take your boots off and relax I also bought these nice thin slippers and I absolutely love these. I think they were about £20 off Amazon. They're really, really thin and fold up so you can just like chuck them in a pocket. So if you don't want to walk around sort of barefoot in the woodlands and get thorns in your feet, then these are a really good option. I just recommend you don't overdo it with your clothes. It's better to take less because clothes can really take up a lot of space in the pack and extra weight. Next up, let's look at my cooking setup. So I took this little gas travel stove, which I've had for a lot of years, and this has done me really well. So it's a good little setup, this. Basically comes in two cooking pots. You've got this gas canister with a little stand that it goes on. And this is the actual stove here. So that just screws on to the gas canister. And there you go. Quick and easy as that. So this cost me £30, I believe. And you can pick them up in most outdoor stores, or you can get it on Amazon as well. The gas refill canisters you can get on Amazon but they're cheaper to get in store. I think I got these from Mountain Warehouse and they're £9. On Amazon they're about £12. And then you've also got these two cooking pots that are good for boiling water, cooking noodles in. And I also just keep a bag for my food stuff. I've got this travel frying pan in there which is really good. a mini chopping board and then I'll just keep stuff like ramen noodles and those little packets of pre-cooked grains and then like tins of beans maybe some pesto and then I'll just cook that up with some foraged greens that I'll pick along the way got my little travel spoon there and a tea strainer, because I like to pick some wild herbs for making tea in the evening. And I'll also just use this smaller pan as a cup when I'm drinking tea. I much prefer to make my own food when I'm out camping rather than get the ration packs or the dehydrated food. I just prefer cooking and it's a lot cheaper as well. So what I found I ended up doing a lot of the time was 
when I pass through a town, I'll go into a shop like a Lidl or an Asda and just stock up on about three or four days worth of food. So then I didn't need to go into town for a good long time. And I'll just keep loads of snacks in my bag as well that are high in fat and protein, so giving you lots of energy, sort of like nuts and peanut butter and also lots of dried fruit because it's nice and light to carry. So that's my food setup. What I do for water is I keep one bottle in my bag, normally like a litre and a half bottle, a bit bigger than that. And then I keep a smaller bottle in this side pocket, which is easier to access, like a half litre, and then just keep topping that up as I go. So I found that was the best way of doing it. And then what I do is if I pass through a town, then I'll just go into a shop or a cafe and ask them to refill the bottle. In Wales, I found there's lots of public fountains, so it's quite easy to top up your water. There's also a really good app called Refill, which I highly recommend getting. It's free and it can just show you everywhere you can go to get free refills of water. In these top pockets here, I keep my wash bag, pretty standard wash bag really. Toothbrush, toothpaste, some plastic free biodegradable wipes, sunscreen, some scissors, bar of soap, and some travel clippers. These Philips ones, quite handy for traveling. They're small and light, and they're also powered by a USB connection, so I can charge them on my battery bank. So also in this pocket, I've got my battery bank. These are really useful for hiking, especially if you're not going to be staying in hostels or Airbnbs every night. So a full charge on this battery bank will fully charge my phone maybe five or six times. So you can go for quite a while without needing to visit like a cafe or a pub or somewhere to charge up your phone. I've had this battery bank for a lot of years. It's an Anchor one, which is the best make, I think, for battery banks. There are cheaper ones that you can buy, but I find the charge doesn't last after like a year or so. They just stop working. So anything by Anchor, I highly recommend. It costs you around £40 and should last you forever. This was a new addition for my hike around Wales. It's a big blue solar charger and I absolutely love this thing. It's really good. So this meant that really I never had to go into a, into town to recharge my phone because I can just open this up and attach it to my bag and I'll be getting solar power as, as long as there's a little bit of sun then it's fine so what you do is you just unzip this bit here get your battery bank get your charger cable Plug it into this unit. That goes directly into your battery bank. And then you can just zip that up in there. I'm not getting any light at the moment because I'm in the woods. If I had this on a fairly sunny day and had it charging all day, then it would charge my battery bank fully quite easily. So I only really had to use this once every five days and that was plenty to keep all of my electrics charged. Now not everyone is gonna need that much electricity but I do a lot of filming on my phone for YouTube so I did need it. So I got this off of Amazon and it was 70 pound which really I think is a bargain because it saved me quite a lot of money in the long run instead of having to go into a cafe or a pub and get a coffee or a beer while I was charging my phone you can just get all of your power needs from the sun good bit of kit a few other items that I have in this pocket I've got my head torch I'd say it's pretty vital to have a head torch if you're going hiking and staying overnight if you get lost or if you need to do something around camp at night then 
yeah, pretty much essential. The one I've got is a Petzl Swift. This one's a bit more expensive. I've had loads and loads of different head torches over the years and you can get cheaper ones for about 20 pound. They end up breaking. So it's, it's worth just spending the money, getting a good one and then this should last you for life. So this one cost me 85 pound, which isn't too bad really because it's a really good bit of kit. It's got a really nice strong light on it. You can't really tell during the day, but it does light up really well. The other reason that I got this head torch is because it can be charged by a USB, which is great. Just means that everything that I've got that's electrical can be charged through my battery bank rather than having to go use a main source. I never go anywhere out in the wild without my tinder bag. This is just my fire lighting kit, basically. I always keep some sorts of tinders in there. I've got some thistle seeds, which are a really great fire lighter. Got some crample or King Alfred's cake mushrooms, which is a mushroom that you can use for fire lighting. I've got a couple of lighters in there, but I've also got a ferro rod. That's a more reliable way of getting a fire going. Although I've got a cooking stove, it's also nice to be able to light a fire in the evening and sometimes I like to cook on a campfire if I'm out in the woods. And I've also got a knife. This is a Mora knife. I know quite a lot of outdoorsy bushcraft people and every single one of them has got at least one Mora knife. They're fairly cheap really. You can pick them up for about £12 but they're a really good build quality. I think they're Swedish. Anything Scandinavian when it comes to tools is going to be good. But yeah, I never go out in the wild without a knife as well. And then in this smaller pocket right at the very top, I've got this waterproof cover for the bag for when it's really bad weather. But I've also got my first aid kit in there as well. Again, this is something that's very vital when you're out in the wild just for a medical emergency. This is just a refill pack for a first aid box. Uh, this cost me about 10 pound, I think. So it's just a basic kit with a few different types of plasters. It's also got gauze, some gel for burns and also cleansing antiseptic wipes. I've also put a few extra blister plasters in there, which I didn't need, which is good. And also some of these chlorine dioxide tablets, which is just for emergency use for purifying water. So if you need to get water from like a stream or somewhere that looks a bit dodgy and you're worried that it might contain parasites and bacteria, then I'll put those in just to be sure. I didn't actually need to use any on this trip because I always managed to find good water sources. So they're just for an emergency last resort. It's nice to know they're there. If you can't get a fire going and boil water and you've not found any clean water sources, then you know they're there as a backup. Also got my trekking poles. These are Faisan, which is an Italian brand. I can't remember where I got these from, but I think it was about £40 for the pair. If you don't use trekking poles and you're planning to go long distance hiking, I can't recommend enough getting these. They're the one bit of kit that can really save your legs when you're walking, especially if you're going up steep slopes or down steep slopes. They're really, really good for taking that bit of weight off your legs. They're also one of those bits of kit that has several uses. I was using them as tent pegs when it was getting really windy just to make sure my tent didn't fly away. You can also use them for making a quick shelter if you just space them out and put a tarp along them then that can be a quick shelter from the rain for you. On this inside pocket I just keep things like my charging cables for my phone and like a USB charger for my head torch and clipper and then a mains adapter for charging 
my battery bank if I am in an Airbnb or something. So I'll just keep one of these side pockets for easy access bottle of water. And the other one, I've got my foraging bag. I've also got a few other items in the bag which most people probably won't need because I use them for filming. But in this side pocket here, I keep my microphones. I've got a couple of mics in there. I use this pocket for keeping my phone in, but these pockets are also good for keeping snacks in for when you're hiking. And then I'll have my tripod in that side pocket. So that is everything that I take with me on a long distance hike. Of course, you need to adjust to what you're comfortable carrying and the sort of trip you're doing. The supplies like food and water are the heaviest part of the kit. And my kit without supplies is generally around 14 kilos but when I'm fully supplied it can weigh upwards of 18 kilos. Now, the general rule is that your kit shouldn't weigh more than 20% of your body weight. So for me, that's fine. For other people, they might want to reduce their kit size a bit. But for me, when I'm long distance hiking, I like to be as comfortable as possible at night. I think it's really important to get that rest. If I'm doing a shorter trip, like a couple of days, I won't take all of that bedding with me. Sometimes I don't even take a tent. I'll just take my trekking poles and a tarp sleep under that and as I said before it really depends on whether you're going to be staying out in the wild for a long time or staying in Airbnbs or hostels. Hopefully this video has been useful for you if you're planning a trip and remember to check out the video description for the Amazon affiliate links and also more information on the products. Okay thanks for watching.